Aloha and hello out there, everybody. This is Miho with the Too Close to Call podcast. What's going on? And we are talking about anything that you can watch on your iPhone, laptop, television, basically anything you can get through the internet, and you're allowed to stream it. Oh, yeah. We're here. Stream my body. Oh, baby. I don't stream. know why we sing that every time. Is that a song know. or are we just making that up? Something about my body. It does make me want to dance, though. (laughs) Riding my pony. (laughs) We are going to start, as we always do, with our boy Jeopardy James. He's back. He is back after a two-week absence where we got to meet some of the finest teachers throughout America. But now we're back to the sports gambler. And we're all back. back He won his 29th game on Tuesday night. We're recording this here Wednesday. I haven't been able to watch it yet. I have it DVR'd, so we'll see if he wins his 30th. But he is up to 2,254,000, which the record, again, 2,520,000. He's coming up on 250, 300 grand, man. That's for him. Two to three shows. Hell, it may be by the end of the week. The thing I love about this is he already knows if he's advancing this week because they do like five shows in one day. Finally, he's been on long enough now where you can see the contestants he's playing against trying to play his game. Yeah. Because now they've either heard or seen what he was doing because early on somebody else would get one. They'd be like, oh, this category for 200, Alex. And yeah. these people now, they're like, oh, shit, I got to hunt for these daily doubles. Right. Because if he gets any of them, this is over. Because yeah. he hasn't missed a daily double since I've been watching, which yeah. is at least half of his streak. And he puts at least 10, 15, 20 grand on, goes from 10 to 20, and you're there with four. And you're like, well, this is over now. Yeah. Ball game, just like that. It's like they're trying to play the game like the Warriors and shoot a bunch of threes, but they're not making any of them. So it's fucking counterproductive there. Right? It's <laughs> tough, man. I don't know if he's ever going to lose, though. What's your over-under? What are you giving him? I think he beats the money record for sure. Oh, that's going to happen. He's at 30 tonight, if possible. So where are you putting him, man? What was Jennings at? He got like 75. Could he get a hundo? I don't know. I'm going under. I'm I saying 50. I think he 50. plays too risky that to get to stay on. Eventually, somebody's going to get him. Going to get those he's daily doubles. Hit, or he's not going to hit one. And yeah. He's going to fuck him. So, yeah, I'd say. Stay tuned. 63. 69. Yeah. I, I like was going to say 69. I knew you were. You <laughs> fancy. 63. <laughs> but the other main television show that's back. Here we go. Your weekly Bachelorette Talk brought to you by JMPAG68. Hit him up and let him know. So here we are. We're siphoning through, guys. We're about, I'd say, 12 to 15 guys left. Okay. And we got Cam coming around. Okay. ABC, always be Cam. That's his catchphrase. Oh, I like that. And he is interrupting guys. He is looking for a pity rose, which is bullshit. He said, he's like, I have a really serious thing I need to tell her. Okay. And then he told her it, and it was basically like, I quit my job, blah, 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 all this shit. And the guys came to her and was like, hey, he's looking for a pity rose. Hey, he's a loser with no job. Hannah was pissed. She's like, you don't look for a pity rose on me. You don't look for a pity rose but on me. But she didn't put that together herself without these other guys playing right? that in her ear. Well, like one guy says like he lost a kid and stuff. If it is true, it's really sad. And I hope he wouldn't make up that fucking story sure. to do it. But um, a lot of pettiness is coming out right now with these guys. There is uh, Luke P, who was the odds-on favorite if you're looking on Vegas. Okay. And he lost his shit this episode. Why? What happened? Because he's, she's kissing other guys oh, and he's like geez. all he's thinking I should get any time I want with her and she's like I need to talk to other people. I'm growing relationships with other people and he just sat with his fucking tail between his legs and it was all pissy and angry and So how is he the around. favorite? What do they know that we don't know? Yeah. Well, he, two episodes ago they were all talking. They were at a uh, talent show, and he didn't have a talent. One of the guys, Jed, who's my boy, I'm putting him down. You're going as on my Jed. winner, okay? He played a song, made up a song for her. everybody, loved it. And then he comes up and he's Huge. like, "I don't have any talents, but I'm falling in love with you." After two fucking days. Oh my god! Of course, love at first sight, Pax. Yeah. That's a real he's thing. Like, I believe in that. And then he got the rose, and everyone was pissed. They're like, "Yeah, you just said that, so you get the fucking rose." <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So anyway, we got that. Cam got sent home for the pity rose. So how many people were eliminated? Three. I don't know the names of the other two, but 
It's a, it's those guys that you don't see, but you're like, oh, they're still on this show. And then you're like, yeah, he ain't getting a rose because I haven't seen any TV time with this guy. So what do we have coming up here in the near future? We're down to like eight guys or so. Do they start doing 12 or something? Do they start doing dates or dinners or? Yeah, well, the Connor who got the one-on-one date. Everybody gets a one-on-one date. One, so there's two group dates, one one-on-one date. Every episode. Yes. Okay. And the one-on-one date was to Connor and she went to the hospital that day. She passed out. So literally his one-on-one date was with her in bed. In the hospital. No, she was home. Oh my God. One-on-one taking care of her. And this guy made a ball. And Chicken noodles. noodle soup. The guy, Chicken noodle oh, soup. He, it was the perfect day for this guy. And then she went, she's like, I need to go to bed. Doctor's orders. And he like wrote note around the fucking room when she got out. And they like, have to know this shit her. stops yeah. after this television show. The guy was like, this is perfect. We're not on this lavish date. That's not going to happen once we're actually together. There's no this way. This is real life. He's writing notes and shit like that <laughs> with her at home. That's why none of these ever make it. Because it they get home and, move and they're down. like, you didn't put rose petals on the bathroom floor when I went to poop today. You did that on the TV show. I know you like to thank yo shit. No, exactly. Stank, but you used to sing that to me with rose petals. Lean a little bit closer. See. It's unbelievable but the yeah, shit that so happens. So we got about 12 guys left. It's getting down to the nitty gritty here. Oh, baby. Um, Luke P, keep an eye out for him to go home soon because he is unraveling. From hero to zero. Zero (laughs) Zero to hero. You know it's coming. He's going the other way, man. That's unbelievable. But yeah, so I like Hannah. Probably one of the better ones. It's just funny to see these fucking guys like absolutely being just pander. So pissed all the time and like they're worse than the girls it's fucking hysterical real housewives of the bachelorette oh dude these guys get so pissed at each other the one guy was like love the kid he's a great guy he is going to make some girl really happy not hannah and i was like (laughs) nice but not this one (laughs) not hannah not mine (laughs) not tonight not tonight russia is the best hockey team nine times out of ten (laughs) he will be a good husband not today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's excellent. So stay tuned. We'll keep you guys updated on how we're doing. Let you know where the gambling sites update from week to week. Because apparently PAGS foresees some fluctuation atop the leaderboard. I got Jed winning it all. Let's Cowboy go. Cowboy Jed. We'll see what his odds are at. See how much money you could make out there. As we continue around what's on television these days... Did you see, Pags, that we have Blue's Clues returning? No. Nickelodeon. Bring it back. Blue's Clues. It is not Steve, and it is called Blue's Clues and You, hosted by Josh De La Cruz. Coming back in a couple of months for the summer. I don't know, man. I'm not going to hate on it because a few months ago, I was up with Izzy in the middle of the night, and Blue's Clues with Steve was on the television. So I had that on, checking out some Blue's Clues, and I was like, hey. I could probably watch this. There's mail dumber stuff. Mail time, mail right? time, mail time. You have to assume some of those classics will be oh, returning. Oh, I'm sure. I can't even remember. Other than here's, here's the mail, it never fails. That's it makes it. me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Mail. That's all you need to know. I love how that guy, everyone said, because he dropped off the face of the earth. It wasn't because he was a horrible actor and that was his only role. People were like, oh, he's a drug addict. He must right. Be the, and then he came out and was like, no, I'm not a fucking drug addict. Like I'm working at Walmart. Don't want to <laughs> do it anymore. Yeah. Not a big deal. So at this point, we'll bounce around a little bit. We got a few things for you guys to check out. We'll get Pags' take, what's going on, a few things that have happened that you should watch. But on a positive note, did you see the clip that's gone viral in the past couple of days around the show America's Got Talent? I did not. There was a blind gentleman playing the piano and singing, and his name was Cody Lee. And Gabrielle Union gave him the first golden buzzer because he crushed it, dude. It was unbelievable listening to him. It's probably like a five, six minute clip where he sings and then they all celebrate afterwards because it was cool. I don't watch those shows. I used to dabble with the American Idols, you know, the voice, that type of thing. But I tend to live online and let the internet show me what I missed as opposed to like diving in truly to what's going on. And this was a quality clip, man, that I think you should check out. And it was one of those voices where you didn't expect it coming out of that type of guy. I like those. 
It's where the voice really has where they're not the looking cool at a little them. thing. You don't expect like you see it, but the judges don't in their faces after they see the person is pretty funny. It's pretty good. Here are three quick ones of documentaries or movies that are coming out on streaming services for the month of June. Let me get your initial reaction on these and then we'll wrap it up and get the people out of here. But the first one on Netflix that will become available, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Ooh, Did you I've see that one? It. Yes. Was it good? Yeah. Okay, the first, the first one. Ralph is awesome. I saw that. I like that one. The second one's not bad. It's just, it's it's kind of stupid. I had high expectations for it. It doesn't suck. It was just like, ugh. Yeah. I okay. wish it was better. Well, I didn't see it in the theater, so I was excited for that. The next one we have on Amazon Prime coming out is a new Jonas Brothers documentary. Yes. Chasing Happiness will be available we'll not soon. not be seeing that. You're not interested in the Fuck Jonas no. Brothers story? Not at all. Not at all? No. Well, uh, you know, you might flick to it. Probably won't be the worst. Will not be. All right. Not a problem there. <laughs> this one I think you will check out, though, on Hulu. Das Boot, a World War II drama, is becoming out based on a book of the same title. I didn't read the book, but I do like World War II dramas and that'll documentaries and movies. Yeah. And this one's on Hulu. So Yeah, that'll be good. I haven't checked out a lot of Hulu original watch? content. Is it any good? Yeah. Hulu has some good stuff. I mean, they have Handmaid's Tale, which is unbelievable they have that new show the uh vow out that apparently everybody loves i still have to watch it but it, it's kind of depressing and i don't really feel like being depressed watching sure. it but at first when you said das boot i thought it was going to be a spinoff of beer fest but apparently not i more get serious it more. did you ever watch band of brothers or the pacific i did i watched the pacific through and brand of brothers was a little bit early for me and i never kind of went back in and yeah. reinvested but yeah the, the pacific was fucked man it was awesome and it came out, it brought a bunch of actors that you see nowadays. Rami like the, Malek. Rami, the guy that won uh, he for- He was fucking weird in that, Yes, he dude. was. That was so, oh, man. Some of the stuff. I got to watch the Pacific Game, because like you, I had watched it when it first started when we were in college, and then I haven't watched it since. So World War II always gets me. I'm always like, yeah, I'll check it out. I was. Did you see Dunkirk? I did not. It wasn't the best, but- Anything with uh, Christopher Nolan, you got to check out. Absolutely. Because Batmans and stuff. Oh, man. Christopher Nolan, quick little tidbit. Brock Meyer, I'm watching season three there. We won't get into it. But Christopher Nolan is one of his triggers. No. Now that he's sober. Yeah. And to get him back into drink. And there's an episode where she, his female partner now, ex-softball player now yeah. announcing – is watching Dunkirk while she's coming off of a breakup. And he walks in and she's like, oh, join me. And he sits down for like two seconds because she doesn't know this yet and he's trying to be a good friend. And after like 30 seconds, she's like, oh, this is in the past. Oh, well, well, now we're in the future. And he gets up and he's like, why does everything have to be a goddamn fucking puzzle with Christopher <laughs> Nolan? He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just have to leave. Christopher Nolan, he's one of these triggers for me. She's like, really? It's a great movie. There's this. And he goes, oh, now the future is currently the present. And he's like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny little That's scene great. where it does make you think everything is kind of like, here's oh, this, here's this. Is so fucked. Yeah, it's and he like, just, he can't stand it. It's one of those things that sets great. him off. But this was our Stream It pod. Stream it. We appreciate you guys listening. We have our Bachelorette talk. You guys need to let us know what we're missing there, because obviously we're two 30-year-old dudes <laughs> giving you our take on the Bachelorette. So you females listening, let us know who your favorite is. And maybe we'll get a little bit of a pool going here to see who's going against Pat. I like it. I like it. Jed, get on board with it right now. Let's go. He's going to win. Follow us, as always, on all your social media platforms. We appreciate it. Spread the word. And we will talk to you guys very soon. Absolutely. Later, guys. Peace.